tall task for Gary Anderson, who joins us here on set. Coach, appreciate you stopping by with us. I know uh, this is, we keep talking about sort of a transformation that has to happen now with this program under your reign. You've got an opportunity now to see some of your guys up close and personal. How has it been in terms of assessing what you have as you get set for the season? It's been really good. You know, we've had an opportunity to really have two off seasons, if you will, because we're on quarters. So yeah. we went off season, spring break, a little off season again. The kids have handled the summer very well. We let them know exactly where we sit. You know, we have a long ways to go strength wise. Uh, we've made up some ground. I don't know how much the ground the other people have gotten away from us where <laughs> we're at, but we just need to be stronger. And they've worked extremely hard. They accepted the fact that they knew where they were. And that's always a great thing, especially when you have a young team. New offense, new defense very different from what they've done in the past. There's no right way and wrong way. We just do what we believe in, and our kids have understood that. I think the youth of this team has helped. 11 seniors, youth is more receptive to change, if you will. <laughs> so that's been a good thing for our kids to understand that, and uh, got a great coaching staff, which, help, which really helps me, and I completely trust those guys. Gary, you've done an outstanding job at Utah State, and then Wisconsin kept that thing going. I don't mean to put you on the spot, how close, because I know at Utah State, it took you four years, you turned that thing around, you did a great job there. How close is this Oregon State team right now when you compare that to Utah State when you first got there? Yeah, well, you know, without just going to coach talk coach for you, yeah, I'm, I'm going to yeah, give you, I I'll give you the uh, an assessment of where we are. Is I, I really need to get them into camp to see how far we've come to be able to, under, to get an understanding. I like our physicality, but I've gained a lot of respect for this league. I've watched film through the physicality of the other teams. So we have an offensive line that's played. You know, it's a process, but, and I've told these kids, we're young, we can use all that stuff. It's a chip on our shoulder when we're picked last. Probably where did we think we'd get picked? But I get all this stuff. We don't have anybody on the preseason polls. That stuff has to drive us, it has to fuel our fire. It has to get us excited to where we're going. But we can win football games. We can be a good football team and we can send these seniors out of here with you know, their chest puffed out, heads held high. As long as we can deal with adversity and we allow ourselves to mature as we go through camp, we can be we can be a good football team, but a lot of things have got to be put, just like every team in this conference right, right now. Right. Um, I like them. I like where we're at. I love the challenge. They're exciting. They're fun to coach. Uh, they're youthful. Something's going to happen. It's like sending a teenager out at night and say, make good decisions. Make good decisions. <laughs> <laughs> I know about that. Right. Yeah. Because speaking of a different offense, you know, last year we were used to seeing Mike Riley's pro-style offense, and of course at Wisconsin, Constant, Melvin Gordon in the backfield, you guys pounded, handed the ball off to him. Dave Ball, when he brings more of an up-tempo, exciting offense, I know we were in the yeah. studio watching you guys spring game, we saw the excitement mm -hmm. from the players and how different this offense will look this year. How much of an impact in, 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 is your decision on the offense and what they're going to do in the style that they do? Well, I have complete trust in, in that staff. Uh, I love where we're at with the quarterbacks when they're going to be freshmen, and we all know a freshman is going to take the first snap. We have a quarterback coach and Coach McGinn. We have a coordinator and Coach Baldwin. You know, obviously TJ's been with them forever. So we have the ability to be able to move at a high level. That's the offense. I want to, I want to change pace. I want to play fast sometimes. I want to slow it down. I want to be aggressive. I want people to not be able to tag us in there. I want to be able to run the football. After that, those guys got it. They, but I don't have to tell them that. That's what they like to do, too. So uh, I'm blessed to have great coaches. The young men in our program are blessed to have great coaches, great coordinators, and guys that work together that care about them. Coach, so well, then who's running the show? Who's going to be your quarterback in week number one? This is <laughs> oh, actually, yeah. I, Put I, it I out there. Throw it down right now. I want to wait a little, right little, bit. Right so, a little uh, bit before we got there. Right yeah. to it. Like I said, it's going to be a freshman. Man, that, that breaking news right now. So. <laughs> uh, we're going to go through the process and see. I, I really would like to get somebody named at a certain time. And I, you know, to be honest with you, I've looked at a lot of different options. I've talked, I've looked back, and uh, you want to have a guy. You want to name a quarterback. Yep, you do. If you can get that done, that's a great thing to do. But I also have looked back and I've said, what if that doesn't happen? What if, uh, what if all of a sudden there's two guys that are even Steven? And so I went back and watched Northwestern a few years ago, and I thought Coach Fitz and his staff did an unbelievable job of playing two quarterbacks. They handled it extremely well. Um, is that our vision? No, that's not our vision. But it wasn't his either. So we're going to go through this process if it's one guy that's ready to go when we were there at Utah State with Chucky it was obvious Chucky was the guy and he was ready to go so we made that decision it all worked out so hopefully it goes just like that again that'd be great. <laughs> Coach, do you think uh, when you have a veteran just say Sean Mannion is still there he was used to running a yes. pro style offense and now Dave Baldwin comes with a different style of offense yep. do you think it would have been easier to have a veteran quarterback running a 
totally different offense come in and be your starting quarterback or like you said a true Such freshman a now, who yeah. doesn't have to be reprogrammed fresh start to come in and run your system i would say with what we want to do with our kids and our youth it would be not and i'm not saying anything we don't want sean Mannion. I, we would no, be no. different <laughs> offensively oh, yeah. if we had sean Mannion uh -huh. than we will be with whoever the quarterback's going to be for us just because we would use sean Mannion's skills right. as one of the best quarterbacks in the country and obviously a high draft pick so for where we want to go and where our team is fitting right now and what we are today it's it's a good time for a freshman to come in sean Mannion was unbelievable in our spring workouts and our spring practices of coming out there and being a mentor and a tutor mm -hmm. to those three mm -hmm. quarterbacks right. it was amazing he he really is one of the he's one of the good guys in the yes, last couple absolutely. of years the, yeah. the the time that we've had an opportunity to spend with him he's been one of our favorites you know it's funny because i'm looking at coach aliotti here and i know he's given a lot of props to what utah's defense has been able to accomplish the last few seasons with yep. kalani sataki you obviously now have him in the fold how important is it to have a guy like him running a defense knowing what these offenses look like with his experience with yeah. with kyle it, Whittingham and the youths it's uh it's a great opportunity for us as an offensive staff, myself as a head coach, to get valuable information from Kalani and from Eliza and from Coach Chad. They've been at Coach Brennan, obviously, has obviously been on the, with, the, uh, with the offensive side. But for Kalani to be in this league and be a coordinator, Coach knows you get a feel. You can, you can understand teams, you understand people, you understand personnel. Coordinators are different. How are they paced? You learn something every time you play them for that three hours and change every year. And quite frankly, you get better as a coordinator, and they do too. Yeah. But it's it, that experience that he's had in this league is invaluable for us. I can tell you're excited, Gary. I think it's awesome. Baldwin, Kalani Sataki, good coach. You're a defensive specialist. Yeah. Did you go to the 3-4 because that's what you want to play, or you went to the 3-4 because of personnel? You know both, Coach. I think in today's day and age, when we flipped over to the 3-4 at, at Utah State a number of years ago, it was really to say, how can we stop these guys from tagging us up on the zone blitzes and know where we're coming from all the time, and, and being able to tell where we were. They're just checking us and sliding to the field or sliding to the boundary. I was like, gosh darn. And, you know, we got that. Uh, it's a lot harder to identify, you know, in the odd front than it is yes. even. It's easier for us to be able to get a couple of big four eyes in there that can be somewhat athletic and play that spot than there is truly at the nose guard. And eight, finding eight defensive linemen in today's day and age, which you have to play against these fast paced teams, mm -hmm. that's hard. Mm -hmm. It's easier to find six. Absolutely. And there's more kids that are 6'2, 6'3, 6'4, 185, 195, 205 pounds that can run like crazy that can go on the edge and drop and play pass rushers. That's an elite position, but there's more of them. And the, and the unique thing about that also is that in the 3-4, they're interchangeable. So yes. your, your, your ends or whatever you're calling your tackles, they can yep. play either side. So your fourth guy can go in and play. No question. In yeah. my opinion. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'd love to talk to you about football. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that day in Hawaii? We, yeah. we're we, were on the, we were on the plane going to Hawaii, you I and I. It. We were yeah. in the back there talking boxes. Yep. All it was a great Drawing game. stuff yeah. up. All, all those, that, was the, that was the fastest flight I ever had to Hawaii. <laughs> Probably for that yeah. much. It, yeah. <laughs> <Battery>. fun. <laughs> well, I, I can't wait to actually fly to Corvallis. You actually, in Oregon State, starts off our training camp. Yes. yes. August 10th, we yep. will be in Corvallis. You will be there I with be me there. as well. Yep. We'll have some fun, not to mention a closer look at what it's going to be like for you in this process on the drive. So really appreciate you giving us and granting us our cameras no. access to your program throughout the course of the season. Wishing nothing but the best of luck Thank and you success guys. this upcoming yep. year. It's great to be here. Appreciate it. Go Beefs. You're going to do great.